We will begin with banded shoulder abductions, also known as shoulder extensions. Here I'm using a relatively light looped resistance band, but you can use any resistance band as long as it's giving you a light bit of resistance. Bringing the hands up to shoulder height, keeping the core braced and the spine in a relatively neutral position, you are going to press the band out. After you finish that set, you will keep that external force along the band and you will try to raise the arms overhead. While you're doing this, you're gonna to wanna to keep the core super braced and really try to avoid popping your ribs up and out. Also, keep in mind that if the head is moving a lot or if the uh, chin is tucking, then you should limit your range of motion as that is an indicator that the mobility isn't quite there. And I'd much rather you honor that current range of motion than force it and reinforce negative habits. Next, we'll be going into a resisted plank shoulder abduction. So the band stays around the hands. You're in a solid plank position. Feet are separated in order to make it a little bit easier. And you are trying to very gently extend the band out to one side, tap the hand down and bring it back. While you're doing this, you do want to keep the core braced and you want to try to minimize your movement. Next, We'll be going into a supine banded hip abduction. So for this one, place the band around the arches of your feet. The legs can be bent, and then you are going to go ahead and spread that band apart. Now, I've done these with my head relaxed, and my core doesn't seem to stay as active, so I prefer to keep my head lifted. So I do have a little bit of support from my hands, but I am, as you can tell, keeping my core braced. I'm exhaling as I'm spreading my knees apart. You can see a little bit of shaking there. Inhaling as I control and bring the band back. Next, we're going into toe taps with an isometric hip abduction. All that means is that we're keeping an external pressure along that band. That first version I did with the legs bent, I believe is actually a little bit harder. It's further distance to the toes, but regardless, you're trying to tap your toes, your shins, your knees. You would want to keep the core braced. You'll see that my ribs do flare up a little bit here, but you're not seeing any space between my back and the floor. So that is an indicator that I'm keeping my pelvic floor lifted and the rest of my core relatively braced. I try to exhale as I reach up, inhale as I come back down. You're also trying to anchor those feet, so don't let them move too, too much. The last thing that we'll be doing is a resisted dead bug with leg extensions. So you'll come to kind of a modified dead bug position. I have my hands down along my side, but you can of course leave the hands up above the shoulders. And from here, you're keeping constant tension in the band as you press one leg out. So extending one leg and then bringing it back in. I'm not keeping my legs very linear. They're still pressing out. So they're kind of spread far apart right now. And again, you can see a little bit of that shaking. I'm exhaling as I press out, inhaling as I pull back. Again, trying to keep my core as braced as possible. I also tend to get a little bit of tension here in my neck. So I would advise trying to check in with your neck and making sure that you're keeping your neck nice and long. You should not feel any pain in that low back. If you do, that's an indicator that some part of the core has turned off and I would suggest lifting the pelvic floor.